Welcome to the Harjit and Prayer Show with your host, Harjit and Prayer. Hey, Harjit. How's it going, man? Hi, Prayer. What's up, man? Oh, there's a lot that's up. A lot, a lot, a lot. Yes. Yeah. And I'm talking softly so I don't wake up my children. Yeah, no, I can hear you. That's good. good. And cool. I'm sure everybody will be able to hear you too. So, yeah, excellent. Yeah. So, so we're, what's going we're on? Both, yeah, we're both working from home. <laughs> both working from home. How are you adjusting? It's, uh, you know, I've been working from home off and on. Um, yeah, it, it was, it's been fine. And, you know, but then when, when it started like going, you know, multiple days, then I started like, oh, wait, I got to change the way I work from home. You know, mm -hmm. before the one-offs working from home was like very simple. Just use your laptop and, you know, whatever, no matter where you were in the house, no problem, right? And sure. then when you're actually like literally like, no, you know, I've got meetings after meetings after meetings on teams and stuff that I got to connect to and and all that stuff. And then open up multiple windows, it started getting challenging. I'm like, oh, no, you know, I got to get a, a bigger monitor and hook this up to, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then I learned uh, is that um, the concept of uh, space separation. So <clears throat> I was, the first few days I was like, I was always working because I was working from my common area, right? So you never leave it from morning to night. Sure. You're always in work mode. So I decided, okay, wait, you know, the kitchen is to eat. The living room is for entertainment, right? The bedrooms to sleep. And let's find somewhere else to go park myself to work. So I moved down to the basement and yeah. Uh, so now I got the little walk. Okay, like I'm going to work and then, you know, when I want to break, I go back up and I'm, you know, I'm getting my coffee and stuff like that. So that's right. been helpful. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, similar for me. If I would uh, work from home previously, yeah. Um, you know, I just have my laptop and I'd sit on the porch and do whatever or, you know, Starbucks is down the road. So I'd go there um, and then I, I could be home in a minute for to do the thing that we needed to do. But for this, um, I was like, OK, so I immediately knew I wanted like a dedicated space. So I picked a corner um, of one of our rooms and set up in there. And for the first time in like 15 years, I bought a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse. Because, you know, the, working on that tiny screen, it yeah. gets to you after a while. It does. It really and, does. But I have to say, like, now that I have a 32-inch uh, 4K monitor, I don't know how I can ever go back to 1080p. So <laughs> when we yeah. get out of this, I'll be buying a, a 4K for myself at work. Yeah. And then, um, you know, just um, I have a uh, Umbrava status light. So, um, you know. The girls know, hey, when it's green, it's okay to talk to Papa. If it's yellow or red or flashing, they know, like, okay, uh -huh. we have to be quiet. But at the same time, I'm in a separate room in the house. I don't have a, we don't have a, um, I don't have a room dedicated for me. It's a shared space. Right. Um, but they know, like, when Papa's in here working, he's working. Okay, and, that's uh, good. That's good. Yep. And I still. I saw a I, similar thing on Twitter um, by. I can't remember who it is, um, who came up with a concept where the entire door has these lights and it changes like if it's red, then don't come in, you know, it's 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 working, you know, working cool. work time. And then if it changes to green, you can come in and, you know, interrupt and stuff like that. And there's some kind of automation or some kind of one of those smart um, light system and stuff like that that's been used at if I can find the tweet, I'll, I'll we'll post it on YouTube. And that's clever. Uh, cool. Same thing with the stuff that you use. We should share that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I still limit myself to work from <clears throat> eight to five. Um, because just because you're working from home doesn't mean yeah, exactly. you need to work more. Um, but I do definitely see why a lot of people enjoy it so much. Yeah. Um, just because you have a lot more focus time, um, you can better manage interruptions and stuff like that. Yes. And people actually have to think, oh, do I actually want to interrupt them? Or can this just be an email versus a phone call versus a stop by the desk and stuff like that, which, you know, everybody, everybody works with that. But this is very different. Definitely getting a lot more done. 
and stuff like I that. I noticed that too. Yeah, I'm getting a lot more done and seems like I think emails may have gone down a little bit, if I'm not mistaken, but there's more uptake in teams and stuff like that. So now you get those instead of like popping into your office, you get them popping into teams and, and chats and you know one on ones and and uh, and then you can choose whether you want to respond or not and stuff like that. So that's that's pretty sure. good. Mm -hmm. So one of the things you talked about the large screen thing, what I noticed is that I was having difficulty with when I remote connect to my systems, my servers and stuff. And I was like, wait, I can't see the you know <laughs> the, the buttons on this remote system. You know, it was so tiny on my laptop. So that's when the the you know the extended monitor. <laughs> I had to go get one for my work, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even extending my desktop. I just mirror it and I shut the screen. And oh, just, is that what you're doing? Okay. Yep, that's it. I I'm I actually work better with just one screen. Okay. Even at work, I have a, you know, we are given dual monitor setups, but I took the second monitor down just because it was too distracting. I, it oh. wasn't for me. Yeah, it wasn't for me. Okay. So give me a screen with more pixels, like 4K, where I can fit more on it, and I'm able to. That's just my style. It's not everybody. Um, okay. That's just okay. me. So. That's great. That's great. Yeah, yeah dude. <clears throat> tips like that, and uh, uh, yeah, you know, you you notice like you know, it, I I mean at work, you know, I've got pretty much everything that I need and stuff like that, and then and the whole remote work thing, uh, remote from home thing came, and I'm like, wait. Oh yeah, but I need a monitor. Wait. Oh, I also need this dongle. Oh wait, I also need that. Oh, I need my headset. I need. <laughs> you know, you don't think about these things, but it's all this little stuff that makes everything work. You know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The last the last time I bought a monitor, it was a it was a 17 inch monitor, and you had three choices: <clears throat> IBM, I'm sorry, Lenovo, Dell, and HP. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Now, if you go to Dell, they have like 30 different kinds of the same size monitor, you know, yes. and it's like, oh my God. Right. So what I finally did is I found like the cheapest, I was like, you know what? I don't know if I can tell the difference between all these things. So I bought the cheapest 4K 32 inch that I could find. And I'm like, this is great. It's yeah. good enough for me. Um, one thing that I did learn though, is like um, all the differences in keyboards and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, now I know why people are so picky <laughs> about what oh, keyboard really? they have. And like okay. a lot of people want the clicky, the yes. loud clicky things. And yes. um, some people want the quiet. Um, and so that was, you know, I'd, I'd, I'm not a fan of my laptop keyboard, but I'm not on it frequently. So I don't really care because I have the Microsoft Sculpt at work. Okay. Um, but I didn't want to pay that much money for something at home. Um, but so I found, um, you know, just trying to do the research and finding like, okay, what's the best match that's like the Sculpt, but less expensive. Um, right. And I think I found it. So. Oh, good, good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. I generally just use my laptop uh, uh, keyboard because I'm also using my laptop screen at the same time. I do that at work as well. Cool. So I've got two big screens and then my laptop, it's all connected. And, you know, I got emails on one and then everything else on the other ones. And yeah, it's nice. just everybody has a different way of working, right? You know, yep. I ended up getting, I first tried a cheaper Logitech keyboard. Um, actually, I have it right here. It's the Logitech K360. So okay. that's what it looks like. And it was really cheap, like 20 bucks. Um, I got it and it's wireless. And I was like, oh, just something about the feel is not working for me. So then what I ended up doing is getting this thing, which is the Logitech MX Keys Advanced. Okay. Um, which is a full-size keyboard. It's pretty heavy, so it sits on your desk. It doesn't move around, and it just has like a nice. It's like you know, it has the keys like a Microsoft Surface okay. um, laptop, which is what I really love. Um, and it comes and with a mouse too. It doesn't come with a mouse. Um, okay. I got a. I actually got a trackball because I don't have a big desk, okay. so I got a trackball that fit on my desk. 
but it's a full size keyboard and it's just like, oh, this just works for me. And I don't feel, you know, I got the sculpt because of ergonomic issues, but with this one, I'm not seeing the same kind of um, corporal tunnel that I had with the bigger okay. style nice keyboards and stuff like that. So I think this will work. But um, I did learn a lot about keyboards though, like cherry keys and blue keys and brown keys. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like, what? yeah, okay. dude, keyboards for IT geeks are like lightsabers for Jedi. So <laughs> you don't become a true Jedi until you actually build your own lightsaber. So you have to go out, find the crystal and make everything. And the, the lightsaber reflects your personality. Okay. Um, so <laughs> like there's a lot of people that customize their keyboards and make it their own. And so there's like ex really expensive customizations out there. One of my friends showed me an escape key um, that was $40, the escape key. Just a key. Just one key was 40 bucks. And they were there was more expensive ones beyond that. I'm like, wow. So it's like a tattoo. Like, you know, yeah. people will get tattoos and IT geeks will get special keys for their keyboard to say like, hey, that's me, whatever. I'm like, okay, that's awesome. I get it, but that's holy cow, me. I'm not paying $40 for a key. <laughs> that's not me. <laughs> oh my God, yeah, yeah. So, all right, so what else uh, we can talk about? Um, did you hear the news about the rename of Office? Yeah, you just told me about it, and I, I gave you my thoughts. That's ridiculous. That makes it's, no sense. No, please I, don't I change. Microsoft, please don't change. It's ridiculous. Or pick a better name, like a, yeah. like you know, Microsoft Office just flows. Microsoft 365 apps for enterprise doesn't work. No. You know. I think that's the one I'm struggling with too. Is the Microsoft 365 apps for business or for enterprise it's like yeah whatever uh, amazing I guess everything is becoming microsoft 365 but there's a i think there's a limit to it you know this you know there's still office 365 there's still i don't know uh what, what is it what's next uh windows os gonna become microsoft 365 os <laughs> Right, exactly. You it know, doesn't make yeah. any sense. Or like... Somewhere. But uh, anyway, yes. so moving on from there. So let's talk about the biggest news ever in our lifetime. For real. For real. I've never seen. I was, I was telling my kids and stuff. I've never seen in my lifetime anything like it. And the reaction to it and how the world has come to a almost complete stop. I mean, we knew they were out there. Oh, yeah. They just hadn't made their presence known to us until now. So, of course, there's extraterrestrial life. I mean, what did you think was going to happen? Like, <laughs> this big universe and we're the only ones in it? Like, come on. And so, yeah, oh, try to make so... something of a very serious situation. So, apologies if you're on the downside of this. But yeah, yeah. this is like some crazy stuff like you know i we were in india during sars yeah and you know we were people just told us like be careful that was it but like this is like a whole different yeah. level of stuff this is so in case anybody's trying to follow us what we're talking about is COVID 19 coronavirus the new and hottest thing hottest virus hottest bug you can imagine, um, you know, and, and he, he, you make a good point there. Like, I, rem I remember when Ebola happened and, he, you know, Africa was getting hammered by it. And I, re I still remember there was a, I think there were a, a couple of doctors or something who went down there to, to help out. And when they came back, like to, you know, places like New York City and stuff, they had it. They were, they were positive for it. But the, the containment was really fast and stuff, and they found ways to use the, I don't know, uh, I, I guess they extracted blood from people that were infected and did, you know, serum and stuff like that from it, and they were cured. And then, I, you know, it never went further than that. I mean, there was just a very handful of cases, and that was pretty serious stuff, too. Mm -hmm. Same thing with, you know, SARS and, and what's the other one, MERS from Middle East and stuff. 
it's it's just this is just beyond comprehension it really is and uh it's kind of sad how the worldwide governments have handled it i mean there's a few that did it like they were like oh we are locking this down yeah and you can see the numbers either they're lying to us and the numbers are not true or it's like okay they actually made some significant behavioral changes in how their society was going to operate for a short amount of time but yeah. you know um yeah this is some i do feel stuff, for, yeah. i do feel for places like italy and stuff that is just just can't catch a break i mean they're losing anywhere from 600 to 900 people a day holy crap i didn't know yeah. that oh yeah the the uh, the uh, infection rate is just in the thousands every day uh, so they're second after the U.S. right now uh, for number of cases and stuff, and uh, and then the the other thing that actually really shocks me is places like India and stuff like that. So I just feel like for a second most populous country in the world and very dense, very small, um, you know, I feel like I don't think the reporting is actually happening, you know, legitimately from that government from from that country because sure they're still in just like you know i think less than 2000 which is like there's no way you know how do you test everybody right yeah exactly yeah. how do you test everybody and stuff like that so those numbers are probably skewed and and probably will once they start testing everybody the numbers are just going to blow up as well so yeah but you know not only that you know we're talking about infections we're talking about you know economic situation right you are seeing companies shutting down layoffs job losses you know stock markets crash everything like i i just hope this this ends very soon <laughs> yeah i don't i have to be honest i don't think it's going to end soon i yeah. think it's going to play out however however it's going to play out but you know some of the positive things that i think we're learning from this is that i'm going to face the name brutally but we don't have to live like an amazon prime life yes we don't have to get we don't have to have the thing the next day if the if walmart and your grocery stores and stuff like that would be like Publix around here if they close at seven or eight o'clock at night and they don't open until eight o'clock the next day that's okay and you know like, what we're learning that now we're, we're experiencing that all of that now mm-hmm. right you can't really order everything from Amazon Prime anymore. I mean, they're, they're limited what they do. You order something from somewhere else, and it's taking sometimes two weeks now to to get delivered. Uh, you know, grocery stores, like you said, or even like, you know, my local hardware stores, and I'm sure it's, it's like that in a lot of places, you have to call in and ask what you want, and then they bring it out on the curbside for you. Oh, that's cool. Wow. So you can't even go into the, to the local hardware stores. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. so that's really tough, right? How, how do you tell them what exactly you want and and what does it look like? And, you know, um, so this is happening everywhere. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I was driving with my one of my daughters a couple of weeks ago and we were heading down to a store and um, stuff like that. And there's no one out. There's hardly any cars. And, you know, she said, when you think about it, look at this, you know, emissions are down. Mm-hmm. Just, no one's driving, so there's no pollution. <laughs> and things like that. I'm like, yeah, you know, that's another side of this whole equation, right? I mean, have you heard about what's happening? Actually, just how the environment is reacting to this. For example, I believe it's Venice. Like wildlife has actually returned to the canals, like the dolphins and swans yes. and stuff like that. Um, up where I used to live, up in New York, they're saying like the Hudson River is actually clear. You can yeah. see you can like you can actually see several feet down. And I'm like, are you kidding me? That that's like crazy. Um, 90% of the I just read today, like 90 compared to a year ago, there's 90% less people flying, which means those emissions are going to be down. Oh, I yeah. mean, like, hey, yes, this is incredibly inconvenient, but I have to admit, like, are there parts of this that we need to learn and take away from? Yeah. Um, like, okay, if we can work remotely effectively five days out of the week, maybe 
making that a norm and have people come in one day a week for meetings and stuff like that, that yeah. like to keep cars off the road. Why not? Honestly, in our little neighborhood, I see more people walking around yeah. every day. Um, um, people biking and stuff like that. All the neighbors are saying hello to each other. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just, I keep thinking like, why wasn't this the norm before? Yeah. Like why did you it have- about it, you know, yeah. this is a no, it almost feels like it's mother nature trying to repair itself, you know, like fixing things. Hey, I need this break. You guys go, you know, hunker down while I fix what you guys broke what kind of kind of a thing it's i mean can we talk on a spiritual metaphysical level here yeah i mean this is the only planet that we can live on th that we know about so far and we have evolved in such a way because of the way earth is and we keep finding interconnected things like i i joke around and i sing yeah. to you guys interconnected we're all disconnected but like, you know, we, like the sequoia forests in California, they're, yep. they've recently learned it's like one big organism. They're finding even between interspecies of trees, there are microscopic um, fungal interconnections all made so that when there's one, this is on NPR, if there's one tree that's sick, the system will signal all the trees, hey, this, this tree is dying it will actually send nutrients through this system to this tree to help it to live. Because if it dies, it could affect the ecosystem around it. And so we have Actually, seen all yeah. this stuff is connected, you know? And so, okay, if we think of earth as like a living organism on a whole, mm -hmm. just like our bodies, if, if, if we are sick, our body communicates that to us and it's up to us to honor whether that, whether what our body is saying, do we need to rest? Do we need to take a couple of days off? Yep. Um, and the earth has been sending us signals. It is a fact that <laughs> the water levels of the sea are going up. It is measurable that the air is more polluted yeah. when it is a measurable fact that there is a mass extinction happening as we speak. It's measurable. It's like facts. So this is stuff earth has been signaling to us the apex organism on the planet like there's something wrong there's something wrong and finally if we don't you know if we don't honor our body being sick what happens we end up going to the hospital and yeah. you know um because before you get pneumonia like norm like if a healthy person gets eventually gets pneumonia it's generally because they were ignoring all the precursors up to it mm -hmm. right i'm not yeah. talking about if you're old if you're young stuff like that and so in the same way, like the earth has been sending us these hints, like there's something wrong, there's something wrong and we ignore it. And then, okay, all of a sudden, I'm not saying like, this right, is that right. old M. Night Shalman movie, The Happening, where the trees, <laughs> remember that? That doesn't <laughs> yeah, sound yeah. so crazy now, right? Yeah. Um, but like, you know, what if we somehow, it, this is a living organism that is a, is, is a virus alive? I don't know how that. Oh, virus, how, uh, yeah. It's yeah. Like, so like and it's like really well adapted to affect humans in this way and i've heard theories of like genetically modified things and it being a, a biological war weapon and all this kind of stuff what if it's like a lot simpler in that um the earth needed us to slow down yeah and, i think so yeah you know, you know it, it almost feels that way it looks like it looks that way you know like uh, we're all forced to take these measures now indirectly, but we're because we're we're not thinking about um, the environment and we're not thinking about any of those things mm -hmm. because we're so focused on ourselves. Uh, you know, I want I don't want to get sick. I don't want to, but indirectly, it is it is part of that whole ecosystem. Sure, right. So no, it makes sense. Um, so I, you know. I have in all, a lot of places, I mean, you know, probably in your neck of the woods and mine and, and so many other places. I mean, that's a stay, stay in place. Uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Advisory or, or requirements and shelter in place. Yeah. Shelter in place. And, you know, it's really important for people to actually listen and, and follow it, you know, um, 
because we have you know i'm seeing also like in my area where you know people just ah you know kind of don't believe it and still going about and stuff like that it's like well i think there's the sooner we all do our part and go through the required number of days or whatever they're asking for the sooner we will eradicate this problem and we can get back to kind of our normal lives right in some yeah. form or another um Bill Gates actually but, uh, said that in an interview. He's like, you know, this county by county, state by state yeah. response isn't going to cut it. If we do a nationwide action, mm -hmm. we'll be able to get this to peak a lot faster. Yeah. And then, and the also, it's like, you know, they are saying 80% of the population is going to get this anyway. Oh, yeah. It's so it's not avoiding it. That's yeah. the issue. It's everybody getting sick at once. That's what this flatten right. the curve thing me means. Is like, okay, right. if we can do this action, that means fewer be people will be sick at a time, which means our healthcare systems, God bless those people, yes. are able to. Um, Doesn't get flooded with with all these people, and then we don't have the resources, and and you know, yeah. Yep. Even with um, I don't know about uh, in your neck of the woods, but in Gainesville, with the county said with shelter in place. Um, restaurants are able to stay open if they yes. do take out only and some of the some of the shops around here are getting very clever because they know <laughs> some of the needs people have um, and so this pizza place says if you order two large pies we throw in a roll of toilet paper <laughs> oh man hey, I'm like that's you know, brilliant so, so what I'm finding now this is really incredible too because Restaurants that never delivered before or wouldn't offer delivery in the past are all doing deliveries now. Mm -hmm. Like, they're like what? Either they do it themselves, or they are signing up with with companies like DoorDash and Grubhub and you know things like that, right? Uber Eats, and all of a sudden, you're like, what? Really? Like, I, I, you know, before you would say that I'm too far out, and you know that kind of a thing. Now it's no, not a problem. You know, they're doing it. That's so what we've been doing now is that obviously we're cooking more at home and stuff. Or, you know, it hasn't changed really. We're still doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. But we also like after every few days, we just kind of like, let's change our pace. Let's try to support the one of the local businesses and we'll order out, you know, take out and something like that. And then just try to help keep the businesses going in some way or another. Um, yeah, so that's very interesting. Uh, I've also heard of like... Uh, uh, is it a restaurant or something like that? That uh, what would they do? They were they they changed their concept in terms of they whatever they were supposed to have. People are not buying it, so they started now doing deliveries for essential stuff like groceries and stuff like that. So they're offering okay. that service. Cool. Sure, you know you you fill out the thing and they'll go out and get you your stuff and deliver it to your doorstep. It's like people are adapting. People are just you know. Becoming smarter. Yeah, it's yeah. an opportunity for a new kind of entrepreneur for sure. Yeah. You know, and like have you heard of like a lot of the distilleries, uh, uh, the breweries and, uh, you know, and stuff like that. They have stopped production and they're actually now uh, producing uh, hand sanitizers. Mm -hmm. Right. So you probably heard that. Yeah. It reminds me of our friend Joe, who has a oh, yeah. 3D, 3D printer and he's yes. uh, helping a company that makes masks by the, the visors, I think, right? Yeah. So he's helping print out parts for the thing that they need. And the company actually reached out to the community and said, Hey, we, if you have a 3d printer, we could really use your help in printing this thing. And they published the file. And so he grabbed it and helped them out. Yeah. Um, which I'm like, that's freaking amazing. And I'm hearing more and more and more about people doing stuff like that. Like, Oh, um, I have it, you know, whatever, like there's this thing I can make in the garage and I have time now. So let me make it. And then right. here and you go. Also, also started like uh, putting out uh, patents for mask and stuff like that. So people are now just, hey, you got a sewing machine at home. Do you know how to sew? Here's a patent for it and make as much as you can, you know, get whatever material you can find at home and stuff like that. And so you're seeing a lot of these masks now. Hmm. Uh, um, you know they they all they're pretty nice looking right because they all like you know like the background that you have and stuff right and mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
So yeah, and then so what they do is they collect all the stuff and then they're sending it off to like hospitals and. Oh, wherever. that's cool. Yeah. So, one thing I never realized is that um. I always assume that like that type of mask was only make a producible in like a very particular kind of environment, like a high tech sterile, whatever. And it's a special material that doesn't allow, but it's really just every day. Yeah. I had no idea. I had no idea. Um, yeah. It's so. I think, you know, like they said, so there has been a controversy back and forth about, you know, use mask and then, no, don't use mask and, you know, back and forth. But I think there's some latest, um, um, I would say studies or stuff like that, where they say, you know, actually they do, they do help, especially you know with with the droplets, right? So okay. if you're wearing sure. it and you're coughing and stuff like that, you're just limiting it to, you know, very close to you, so it's not spreading out. So you know, it it does contain it somehow. But but people are really, it's they're coming up with some creative ways of doing this. Um, I saw somewhere on Facebook and stuff, and someone said. Hey, if you guys are running short of, you can't find elastic bands for the mask that they're making, right? Mm -hmm. you can't find them. Um, go out and cut one of those bungee cords that you have, like carefully cut it because it's nothing but full of uh, rubber bands in it. Right, that makes sense. You know, right? Like, <laughs> I, I wouldn't have thought about that. You know, that's but, interesting. But that's, people are just that's fantastic. Very creative. Yeah, it's brilliant. So that's good. Yeah, and uh, I'm really impressed, like um, how quickly, um, at least good IT people, IT people were able to help out organizations and yes. immediately transitioning their workforce to remote. I and mean, it was like day and night. Um, yeah. I know at yeah. University yeah. of Florida, people were working like crazy, um, doing extra work to get that happening. And I hear about like smaller companies where like they were never ever thought about remote, and then their IT person just boom, like in a matter of a day. OK, this yeah. is how we have to do it. I'm hearing um, compliments from people, um, you know, regular people and saying, you know, as much as healthcare workers, which is, hey, you know, hands off to them. They, you know, you can't even compare what they do for, uh, you know, right now and all the time. Uh, but also compliments for technology workers, because, you know, people like us are keeping technology afloat and, you know, implementing new stuff and, and supporting it and you know allowing all everyone else who needs to work from home or even like online learning and stuff where that's disrupted now like mm -hmm. students are not in classes anymore everything's shut down but they still right. have to do their learning right so it's just i mean we all have our our roles to play i guess and and contribute in some way or another so. yeah someone i was talking to um he was saying like you know It'll be interesting. He he's convinced. He knows, and we all know it's going to be a different world after this. Um, people are realizing that the university system doesn't have to be brick and mortar. You know, we can make this work in a different way, and maybe yeah. it can help out students by costing less, um, which will enable more people to go to higher ed. I think that would be pretty freaking yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, and same thing with um, primary ed education as well. Like, hey, if this can be done remotely um, with because of technology, then maybe we need to invest in better toolings for our schools so that to help the kids out that kind of need that extra step but can't mm -hmm. afford to have a tutor or um, extra thing that a parent doesn't necessarily have the money for. But because of technology, the school can take it to that next level. It's like, yeah. it's proven right now. Yeah. Um, One of the um, things that we've learned through this process is that uh, we found that some students um, and some staff live in places where they don't have internet connection or mm -hmm. have very weak internet connection and they can't do anything about it. So in general, in, you know, in other times, you know, they could go to a local cafe or you know, McDonald's exactly. or whatever. Now you can't do any of that. You can't go out of your house, right? You got to stay. So it's 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 that catch twenty two situation. It's like wow, you know, because there are places that are really rural, especially in Vermont, and it's like oh yeah, and some of them have like DSL lines, but they're weak DSL lines and stuff like that. It's it's incredible what you learn. <laughs> Absolutely. 
I got to give, uh, you know, uh, kudos to a lot of tech companies and a lot of uh, software companies and stuff that that suddenly came out and said, hey, we're giving our software for free for the next, I don't know, three months, you know, things like that. For, you know, think about, you know, uh, Zoom and, um, you know, various other things out there that just to help people communicate and collaborate and, and you know, uh, do video chats or whatever, you know, uh, you probably have heard of a, a bunch of them as well. Absolutely. Zoom is one I've heard of highly. Um, Slack, yeah. you know, is off, offering 50% off of their plans. Yeah. And then also their associated businesses like um, Jira is the one I can think of. And there's uh, some other ones that they're offering off Dropbox. They're offering if you get the Slack subscription, then you can get this other stuff for even cheaper than it would normally be, or even free. Right. So it's kind of cool. I think I heard yeah. Microsoft Teams did a consumer version, uh, offered a consumer version for free or something like that as well. Um, so I guess you don't have to, I don't know. I, I didn't read up a lot about it, but there's some, some free thing for consumers as well that they just put out. Sure. So, yep. Um, one thing to note, because my computer is getting ready to reboot, um, if you use Bing or if you have not used Bing, um, one, of the, one, of the, one of the reasons I use Bing is that you can, when you sign in with your Outlook, um, I'm sorry, your, yeah, your Microsoft account. Your Microsoft account, yeah. You get points as you do searches. And so once a year, I get to go to Chipotle because of ah. my Bing searches. However, if you sign into Bing today, um, I noticed that it said, hey, you can switch your rewards to help in uh, coronavirus relief and oh. research and okay. stuff like that. Um, so, you know, obviously I, I did that. But if you're not aware or if you haven't used um, Bing in the past, just think about maybe switching over to that for a bit to help because every little bit works. I have no idea how it works on the back end, how they justify you know, how they come up with that or, or whatever. But honestly, like my Bing searches are just as good as Google searches with a prettier background. Um, and there was something else I wanted to mention. Um, what about the one where the, you uh, uh, allow or provide your unused uh, CPU and processors for this? It's almost like SETI at home, but it's it's a different name for this cause as well. I don't know what okay. you heard about that. Mm -mm. That's cool. Oh, IBM is donating a ton of um, um, what is it called? Machine learning resources over to okay. help, which is kind of neat. Like, wow, that's that is a lot of money there <laughs> that they're giving away. Yeah. Um, you know, on a lighter note to end this, um, you know, I was convinced like this might be some kind of conspiracy theory, but it's real. But, you know, on Facebook, I log in like a couple times a week. I'm not a big Facebook user, but <laughs> when I did, it was just constantly like COVID, 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 COVID. But then all of a sudden, when I went on Saturday night, all that I read was Tiger King, Tiger King, Tiger King, Tiger King, Tiger King. Tiger King. Have, you, have you heard about this show? No. Dude, like, so all the rednecks that I know are scared of this redneck. <laughs> like, they're like, we had no idea, like, how far redneck you can go. Um, really? Yeah, okay. it's like no offense to people that proudly call themselves redneck at all, but that's just the only way I could describe this. But it, actually, um, this place isn't too, too far away from, from Gainesville. And so I'm like, that might be a really weird road trip to take. Um, but it's a small documentary on Netflix about some really, dis really disgusting and disturbing stuff, but it blew up Facebook. Like oh that's all I'm like, what the heck are people watching? Like, is it that bad that we have to watch this garbage? <laughs> I don't know. I gotta check it out. I, guess. I haven't I haven't seen it yet. I've just read descriptions and like people losing their mind over like, how is this real? <laughs> like, is this for real? But it's it's real, unfortunately. Well, on another note, um I started uh <laughs> drinking uh Manhattans at home. Oh, nice. And I never used to do that, you know, you occasionally in a, in a bar or something like that. But my wife had been, you know, experimenting with recipes and, you know, trying to fine tune it and stuff like that. So I used her recipe and, and uh, you know, it's basically you got to get the right whiskey. So it's absolutely for us is the rye whiskey apparently mm -hmm. makes, makes a difference. 
Absolutely. And if you try a different kind of whiskey, right? You're a whiskey guy and, uh, it, you know, it burns your throat and stuff, but rye is like really nice. Um, and then some vermouth, I think it's sweet vermouth. Mm -hmm. um, and um, ice, obviously, and oranges, orange slices. So yep. you squeeze a little bit of the orange and then you dump it in and it's just amazing. Yeah. So. For me, Manhattan's okay, but you know my drink. It's the old fashioned. Exactly. You know, that's yeah. like, that's my thing and uh, that'll always be. But one thing, all of a sudden, I just had this taste like this. I haven't had it in forever, but all of a sudden, I was just like, I don't know why, but I want Prosecco. And yes. so, you know, I went out to the store and I'm like, oh my God, why are there's there so, so many kinds? Many. Yes. And so and I there's just, a difference, you know that, right? Yes. Um, yes. I tend to like the, when it comes to wines, I like sweet reds because they're sweet. And so I picked a non-dry one. Um, yeah, it was a non-dry. Is that the right? It was, it was a. It was Great. on the, yes, thank you. Yeah. And like, you know, I was like, okay, this is pretty good. And I've had it in the past. Um, and now it's just like, you know, all of a sudden I was just like, why do I, why do I want Prosecco all of a sudden? It was yeah, the we have weird. A lot, a lot of that every week, actually. It's one oh, of do my, you really? yeah, one of my drinks. Yeah. Well, I drink a lot of Prosecco. <laughs> That's funny. Maybe well, it's, it's also like, you know, like we drink it so much that we know the, the variation in taste and, different brands it's like ah yeah we'll stop drinking that one well you know once you stick with one you you really like you just stick with that one but the only problem is that um the prices so sometimes you'll find some some of them will be on sale like ridiculously low sure and then a week or two later they bump up by like five bucks or something per bottle you're like what the hell <laughs> like you know so if it's on sale when you find the one that's you like and if it's on sale get a bunch yeah, just that's what I do too. Yeah. Got it. So yeah, it's funny yeah. because like I'm I'm just drinking it like in a beer glass. <laughs> my, yeah. So yeah. I when I Never. went to Italy um, to Milan, um, so I picked up this drink. It's uh, they call it Aperol, right? Mm -hmm. And I never, never even, to be honest, with you, I never even heard of it here. Okay. And. So when I went there, they're like, what's this orangey kind of drink? Oh, it's like it's Prosecco. It's a little bit of soda. It's a little bit of, you know, this yeah. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll try it. And and wow, it was it's pretty good. So I started making that. I can buy that Aperol bottle here. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing, exact same bottle, you know, from Italy. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, every now and then I'll make that, you know. It's nice cooling cool. drink, actually. It is. I think that's, yeah. I... I found that I really miss the um, the uh, hard ciders that we had up in the Hudson Valley, the ones yeah. that you can only get locally. Um, and so I think that's where my taste for that all of a sudden, like, oh, I haven't because yeah. I'd, I'd been thinking of about hard cider for a long time. And then all of a sudden, like the word Prosecco, I'm like, oh, yeah, maybe that's a good. And I was like, yeah, this is good. This yeah. is a good alternate. And I don't like the big name hard ciders i like the small batch stuff okay so okay when we if, yeah all right okay i think we should end this it's been Sounds a good. lot of COVID, and <laughs> so <laughs> until next time um i'm um Hodget. you'll find me on twitter as at hooch h-o-o-r-g-e and this is prayer you can find me on twitter at the it jedi all right cheers guys and stay safe Stay safe. Stay at home. <laughs> fork, fork, fork. <laughs>